Hey guys, welcome back to Brian's Mysteries and Adventures on Trail. And today's case is very, very bizarre. It's one of the most bizarre that I've ever read about. And it's going to take us down to Polk County, Arkansas. And we are going to be discussing the disappearance or whatever you want to call it, because a lot of people have different opinions on this, but of Gloria White Moore McDonald, and she disappeared on January 26th in 2001. Now, Gloria was 68 years old at the time. She was roughly 5'6 and 120 pounds. She had a blue plaid flannel shirt on, a glossy bright yellow hooded jacket, blue jeans, sneakers, rose tinted sunglasses, a gold wedding band, a platinum other ring, very bright uh, cover, colored clothing. She also had a, a bright uh, necklace, a cross necklace, and a few other things that would have made it very easy for her to stand out in a crowd. She had red hair, brown eyes, and I mention these things because it was January. She, was, she had done everything right. She was wearing bright color, colored clothing. She was an outdoors person. She was very familiar with the outdoors. So this particular day, it's just very curious as to what happened. And we're going to talk about more of the actual events, but it is extremely bizarre. She mainly went by the name of Gloria, but her full name was Gloria White Moore McDonald. This was her second marriage, and we're going to get into that. Now, she, Gloria was visiting Queen Wilhelmina State Park in Polk County on, on January 26th of 2001. She was with her husband, her stepson, and her stepson's girlfriend. Their names being Sean and Aaron, and they were from, well, Sean was from the previous marriage that her husband Daniel now, at the time, was 63 years old. And they all headed out for this hike. Sean and Aaron had been, they were visiting Arkansas from Florida for the first time. Now, Gloria was very familiar with this area. She had grown up in Texas, but she went to this area a bunch of times. So the group headed over to this trail called Lover's Leap Trail in the Queen Wilhelmina Park. And they got to the trailhead around 12.25 p.m. But as they were going down the trail, there was a bunch of debris, like uh, logs and trees from a storm that had passed through a couple days before. And Gloria just said, well, no, you know, it's not for me. I'm going to turn back. So she went back and said, I'm just going to head down to the gift shop and I'll meet you guys when you're done. Well, that's what she did. And when Daniel, Sean, and Aaron got back to the start of the trail where they were supposed to meet Gloria, she wasn't there. So obviously they're like, okay, well, we'll go and check the gift shop. So they walked down to, to the lodge and Gloria wasn't there. They walked all around and they couldn't find her anywhere. And just to give you a little further information, this is not described as a difficult hike. It's supposed to be moderate and it's only 1.3 miles long with maybe an hour, an hour and a half duration depending. And it was 150 to 250 yards down the trail that they had come across these trees or whatever was blocking the, the way from the storm. And that's when she had decided to turn around. Well, it was around a half hour later when the group had finally returned to the lodge and that's when they couldn't find her. So there was really only about 30, 35 minutes between when they last saw her and when she disappeared. And when you look at these pictures, yeah, it's a park, but it's not an overly giant park. I mean, yeah, when you get to the top, these are some of the views from the top, but they'd never even met it there. They went to the car that they had all brought there. The car was locked. It was parked in the exact same spot and all of Gloria's possessions were locked inside. They said that there was nothing missing and they're like how can this person being you know a redhead with a big bright blue bright yellow jacket on blue sneakers just disappear into thin air in the thin air i mean it was the one other detail i should note was she was carrying a minolta riva zoom 90 camera with serial number 40907425 it wasn't until um, January 27th that the Arkansas, Arkansas State Police were contacted by the Col Polk County Sheriff's Department in Mena after they had done their initial search of Queen Wilhelmina Lodge and they found obviously no sign of Gloria. Then they did a thorough search. They brought in dogs. They brought in um, you know, a different helicopters and different search and rescue teams from the Polk County search and rescue team and they found no signs of her. 
What got even weirder was when they started interviewing the family. Gloria had been working as a court reporter for the Star newspaper, and one of the theories that they came up with was that she had been abducted by something that she wrote about or someone she wrote about, but a lot of her friends went back and reviewed those notes and articles to see if they could find something, and there was no indication that she had written something that would have merited her being abducted or anything like that. Then the family... The main family, the husband, they had a theory that she may have walked up upon something, like involving something illegal or some kind of illegal activity, and that they, she had been taken off and killed in, for, to keep her silent. Now, the two major police agents working it were Lynn Benedict and Hayes McRider, and they interviewed everybody at the lodge. There was only apparently one person that had actually rented a room at the lodge, and there was only roughly six men who were working for the state park at the time, uh, one in the kitchen help, and then some as a waitress, and then a few to help tend the grounds. And they even brought in special dog teams to you know try and find her scent, which apparently they did find a little bit of a scent. It led back down below where the main building was, but then it just kind of fizzled out. So they couldn't even determine whether she had ever even been in the park. According to the head detective, this all happened within 30 minutes. She just disappeared without a trace. The bloodhounds really couldn't find anything. And the authorities were just baffled about what could have possibly happened to this woman. You know, possibly she got lost. Maybe she fell somewhere. But because it was wintertime, they probably would have been able to see her much easier, especially because of the clothes that she was wearing. And this started leading the police to wonder whether she, like I said, had ever even been in the park. And her husband, Daniel, said that he kept being referred to as the number one suspect, so he demanded that they give him a polygraph test. Now, the, spe the state police investigator, Linda Den Benedict, she did say that he did take it and he did pass. Despite having passed the polygraph, they still had a lot of speculation around Daniel and his family. For one, Gloria's family kept insisting to the investigators that she was definitely deceased and they just couldn't link anyone to the crime and when they would interrogate them they would just say like well in my mind she's dead daniel would say the same thing i think she saw something that she shouldn't have they all sort of had the same story about how she was probably snatched up and tossed inside one of the buildings so of course the investigators look through all these old buildings, the Wonder House, all the original buildings that were on the property, and they didn't find anything. And then a week after she disappeared, Daniel told them that he was going to be moving back to Florida. He said, I don't want to be the guy in town where everyone is looking and saying like, oh, he killed his wife on the mountain. And unfortunately, Okay, that could be all true, but it does cast a certain level of suspicion. And of course, the sheriff says that they weren't able to rule out Daniel as a suspect, although they didn't have any evidence to prove that he was, because they just couldn't find anything. And they couldn't even prove that she had ever even been on the mountain. Not to mention, Daniel, the husband, kept saying these awful things. He said, quote, Anybody abducting his wife, that would be an impossibility because for her body, her looks, she could not possibly be considered pretty. Now, Gloria was Daniel's second wife, who apparently he'd only been married to for about a year. And according to records, his first wife died in her home of natural causes. But, you know, who knows? Now, Sean McDonald, the son, said in an interview that, his father is a really good guy. He just comes across the wrong way. He says the wrong things. He just gets jammed up. But at the same time, it's it's very bizarre that why would they leave and why would they say these things and why would they be so sure that you know she had been abducted? Why wouldn't they be up there? Most people, I know people handle grief in different ways, but in my experience, most people are just trying to find their loved ones. They're not trying to find excuses as to what possibly happened to them after only been missing for, you know, a week. Again, I know everyone deals with grief differently, but even her daughter from the previous marriage, when she was interviewed, she said that she thought her mom was most likely deceased because she said that if her mom had gotten into the car with somebody, she would have mouthed off and been really mean and she would have like basically encouraged them to kill her, which is kind of crazy in my mind, but you know, who knows? But the other big thing is though, aside from one of the maintenance workers that was working there on property at the time, 
there are no other people besides Daniel, Sean, and Aaron, the people that were with Gloria, that can confirm that she was even in the park that day. And that's one of the hardest problems with these cases because really it's possible she was never even there. And since their stories all seem to line up, I mean, who knows what could have happened and what would be the motive of kidnapping this you know, court reporter who was you know, almost 70 years old, who was a friendly lady, who knew people in the community. What could have been the motive? And that's the same thing that the authorities have been struggling with all these years because they, don't, they can't seem to find one. And I should clarify that that maintenance worker, he didn't confirm that he saw her. He said that he may have seen her. So, you know, that's, that's definitely not a confirmation. And none of her things have been found, you know, her camera, nothing. You know, just to review, Gloria was 5'6", 120 pounds. She was 68 years old at the time. She's a white female. She's got red hair. She was last seen in a blue flannel, glossy bright yellow jacket, blue jeans, blue sneakers, tinted glasses, a couple of different rings, a gold ring, and a half carat sapphire ring. And she has like I said, red hair, brown eyes, and she usually went by the name of Gloria Whitemore or Gloria McDonald. And that was on January 26, 2001. That was the last time anyone has ever seen her. She has not been seen since. And I just think that we owe it to her to try and find her justice of some kind, like figure out what happened to this woman, because this is a relatively simple trail. I will note that past the lover's leap area so the trail that they were going to as you can see in this sign it does say that you know that does it is prone to like fall like trees falling and debris falling but my problem with that is that once they came upon that debris she turned around she hadn't already bypassed any other debris on the trail she saw the debris the fallen trees and decided that she was going to go back down to the gift shop so it wasn't like going back down the other direction, she was going to have to traverse anything. They had already come up that way. So I don't know. It's one of those cases that is just so frustrating. It drives me crazy. I've read through the case notes over and over and over again. And I don't know, I guess I would have to agree if I had to make an opinion with the police that she probably was never in that park. I mean, I can't say for sure, but it, it just, the whole thing makes no sense. I mean, Yes, it's very possible she could have just fallen or had an accident, but why would somebody just take her off that mountain? What would be the motive? My other issue is something that the daughter said when she was interviewed. She said that no one would ever give her mom crap, so if someone did try and grab her off that trail, I'm sure she would have yelled and screamed, and there was a bunch of other people nearby. I mean, I'm sure somebody would have heard something. It was just like nothing, though. I mean, she... Between the 30 minutes when she last saw her husband and her two stepchildren, that was it. So they would have had to manage to get her down the hill, into a car, and without making a word in 30 minutes, without anyone else seeing them too. I mean, it just seems kind of far-fetched. Again, I'm not saying it couldn't have happened, but I don't know. This case has just always bothered me. I'd love to hear your guys' feedback or theories or thoughts on this case or what might have happened because like I said I've read through the notes several different people's notes over and over again and they all sort of line up I mean it's all the same information but it just I don't know it just makes no sense to me and the conclusion I came to was that she was most likely not on the mountain but again that's just my opinion I don't know I'd love to hear what you guys thoughts are and yeah hopefully we can get this woman justice I'd like to dedicate this video to Gloria White, Moore McDonald, her friends, and everyone who loved her, and hopefully one day she can get some closure and some answers. This still is an open, active investigation. If you have any information, please contact the Polk County Sheriff's Office at 501-394-2511. I want to thank everybody for watching, as always, and please be respectful in the comments if you choose to leave them. Special thank you to co.ag for providing the background music, and I'll see everybody in the next one. Take care. Hey everyone, thanks for sticking with me till the end. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any feedback or comments, just send me a comment, or I'm right now I'm working on getting a new email address set up. Uh, the one that I had been using has had all kinds of problems, unfortunately. Not on my end, it just... Uh, 
But anyway, they're, they're still working on that for me. If you guys have any suggestions, you can leave me in the comments or uh, use snail mail, unfortunately. But I should have another one up and running. I'm just trying to get all the emails that were sent to that one transferred to the new one. Uh, if that is the way I have to go. But I appreciate everybody sticking with me and all your patience and all your support and hope everyone's year is off to a great start. See you next time.